What you're looking at here is the game that I'm currently working at. Whenever I shoot a target, the corresponding color block will change their state. How do you think this is implemented? The world is stored in a 2x2 matrix. I could store the positions of every color block in a separate array and then flip those blocks. This means that I have to reset that array every time I load the level and be careful to update it correctly if I dynamically add more blocks while in the level. However, I chose to do something simpler. Every time I shoot a target, I just iterate to the entire map. You might have heard that parameter optimization is the root of all evil. This is not an excuse to write bad code, but in my case, it's an example where an optimization like this won't bring any benefit. As you can see, you don't notice any frame drop when I shoot the targets. This is because this unoptimized system is called rarely and at most once every few seconds. In general, you shouldn't save states about your program, but rather query them dynamically if possible. Premature optimization, however, doesn't only refer to code speed, it also refers to optimizations in the code itself. I'm of course talking about abstractions. Abstractions are a form of code optimization because it's a way for you to reuse your code. Why use abstractions? Well, it is about writing code faster and not duplicating mistakes. If I find a bug in the code that I used in three systems, I only have to fix it once. There are drawbacks to making abstractions, however, and I think that we should learn to notice them to correctly choose when to make them. I think that you should try to write simpler code because it is easier to maintain, understand, and modify. Abstractions can help, but also hinder. This is the game engine that I'm currently working at. It has different windows that serve different tasks. Let's see how you would implement something like that. Usually, people start with a base class and inherit all different types of windows as a subclass. You can store all of them in the same vector and use polymorphism to update all of them. The problem comes when you realize that every window behaves slightly different in a fundamental way. I want to have only one instance for some of them, like the asset manager, while I want to have multiple instances for others, like the game view. I haven't even mentioned that the game view belongs to an entire different system. Anyway, Another problem is that every window requires different data to update. So we started with the assumption that we can group together the common functionality of all the windows, but now we have to take into account all the uncommon functionality for all the windows as well, in order to call the update function. We could do that, but another better solution would be to create some sort of API for the user to request different things from the engine. Why am I doing all of this though? This would allow a nice API for the user to add new windows, but I don't need that. So why solve a problem that doesn't exist? In my implementation, I simply have a different object for every window type. And I simply update all of them. Now, I have all the flexibility that I need because I don't have a common abstraction shared between all of the windows. People might say that now I have to duplicate my code and behavior, but I don't see how that is worse than the complicated system that we tried to design a few seconds ago. Again, it all depends on what you want to achieve. You should start thinking about your end goals rather than what fancy design patterns to use. Using a design pattern or a fancy abstraction is not the end goal. The end goal is to solve your problem in the best way possible. And if you add unnecessary complexity, that is not the best way possible because you bloat your system in order to obtain some benefits that you might not need. And you know that you don't need them. And even if you did, it's easy to add them later if your system is not bloated. So, try to see if your abstraction will make your code simpler or better in any way, and if not, see if it's worth your time and effort. Before I leave, I just want to drop a last example of adding unnecessary complexity. So, it is common to see something like this in C++, but it will probably look like this, so you know for sure you don't have memory leaks. I know a better way to not have memory leaks though. How about we do this? And this is especially true for classes, because in C++ when classes start to manage memory, you suddenly have to overload all of their constructors and you can easily start making mistakes. This is why I never allocate memory if I don't need to. A class that just has some members is never too big to just store on the stack, so there is no need to allocate it dynamically. If I have to allocate memory, however, 
I usually manage it myself, so you might like how I do it or not, but for example if I need the texture for my game, I just load it once and copy its reference whenever I want. At the end of the game I just free it so I don't have to mess with reference counting and copies. This becomes very context specific however, so before you spam the comment section telling me how stupid I am, remember that this is just an example that happens to work in my case. So this is basically the takeaway that I want you to take from my video. Things are very context specific and you should always think if something that you want to add in your code is helpful. Feel free to comment your thoughts on this advice so you can share your ideas with others. I make content about game development and programming in general, so if you are interested in educational videos like this, check out the 5 things I learned from making my first game. Or if you'd rather see me suffer, click this video where I make Terraria in just 3 days. And consider subscribing for more videos like this. See you!